Welcome back. Now for your five-day weather forecast, we go outside to Josh McConnell. Thanks. Winter isn't quite done with us yet. We have 10 to 15 centimeters of snow possible this weekend. But first, here is a little bit of good news. Here's your five-day forecast. Our high is minus four and it will only get warmer from there. Tomorrow, our high will be a balmy minus one with a low of minus six. Saturday will stay at minus one, but that is when the big snowstorm is expected to hit. Sunday, we see a dip in temperature with a high of minus three and a low of minus eight. Finally, Monday will continue a downward trend at minus six and a low of minus 12. So enjoy those warmer temperatures the next few days, but keep those shovels handy. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Josh. Turning now to provincial news, Premier Kathleen Wynne is in downtown Toronto this morning with an announcement on Ontario's minimum wage. So we're very pleased, uh, Yasser and I, to be here today to announce that Ontario's minimum wage will rise to $11 an hour, up from the current rate of $10.25. This increase reflects the rise in the consumer price index since the last minimum wage increase, which was in 2010. The change will take effect on June 1st, however, the law needs to pass in the minority legislature, and we could have an election first. Part of the law would tie to annual wage increases to the consumer price index. The raise will affect over half a million workers in the province. Quebec's provincial police have raided two residences of an ultra-Orthodox Jewish sect in the Chatham area. Police started investigating after concerns were raised about the well-being of the children in the group. Child welfare authorities want 14 children placed in foster care. Members of the sect moved to Chatham in November. The 17-year-old ringleader of an Ottawa-based prostitution ring may be sentenced as an adult. The teenager who appeared in court yesterday is one of the three defendants charged. The offenses include human trafficking, producing child pornography, and abduction of a child under 14. The victims were lured through Facebook and social media. A woman has died after her scarf was caught in a Montreal subway escalator. Police say the woman was found at the bottom of the escalator this morning. They say she was strangled when her scarf was caught in the machine's moving parts. Police have not released her name, but say the woman was in her 30s. Russian police say they have two suspects in custody in connection to a December suicide bombing. 34 people were killed in the city of Volgograd. The two suspects are reportedly brothers from the region of Dagestan. With just over a week left before the Sochi Olympics, officials are in overdrive trying to keep the games safe. Canada is banning senior Ukrainian officials from coming here. The move comes in response to the continuing crackdown on protests in Ukraine. Foreign Affairs Minister John Baird says Canada is sending a message to the government in Kiev. Baird also says that if further action is necessary, Canada is prepared to act. In health news, there's talk today about a new way to treat peanut allergies. British researchers have found a way to help some children build up tolerance to nuts. They were given small doses of peanuts in their diet involved in the study. Approximately 100 children aged 7 to 16 after six months of treatment. More than 80% of the children can now eat five peanuts at a time. And now with your sports news, here's Hugh Smith. Tonight, the Humber Hawks host the Fanshawe Falcons in two key volleyball matchups. First up, the undefeated women's team take on the Falcons at six. The Falcons sit two points back of Humber in the standings. A win for the Hawks would lock up first in the Western Division. Next, the first-ranked men's team takes on third-place Fanshawe. With a win, Humber could widen the gap on first place. Meanwhile, Fanshawe will be fighting for their playoff lives. That game will start at 8. No DeRozan? No problem for the Toronto Raptors. Even though they didn't have their top player, the Raps cruised to a convincing 98-83 win at home over the Orlando Magic. Kyle Lowry led the way with a double-double, 33 points and 11 assists. With 31 points on Monday, Lowry topped the 30-point mark for the second straight game, the first time he's done that in his career. Toronto has won two in a row and are back in action Friday night in Denver. The Leafs will try to make it two in a row as they welcome Florida Panthers to the ACC tonight. The Buds will look to keep their grip on third in the Atlantic Division, while Florida is second last in the East, 13 back of their opponent. Florida will be trying to avoid a second straight loss after losing 6-2 to Boston on Tuesday. Puck drop is at 7. The message to Jays fans last night was clear, keep the faith. Second season ticket holders attended the annual State of the Franchise address at the Rogers Center. Jays head brass, including GM Alex Anthopoulos, took questions and offered optimism for fans. 
Toronto has been quiet this offseason, acquiring only Dion or Navarro to replace catcher JPR and Sebia. A season ago, the Jays finished last in their division after several major offseason acquisitions. The UFC has announced several Canadian events in 2014. Five events were announced, including two new venues. First, Quebec City hosts their debut UFC event, the finale of the Ultimate Fighter Nations on April 16. Next, UFC 174 hits Rogers Arena in Vancouver on June 14. Toronto will get its fifth UFC event on September 27 with UFC 178 at the Air Canada Centre. Halifax makes its UFC debut on October 4 with a fight night card at the Metro Centre. The Canadian Tour ends with UFC 181 on December 6 in Montreal. Now time for your Olympic watch. Canada will be sending a personal record number of athletes to Sochi. 221 athletes will be making the trip to Russia for the Games, topping the previous high of 202 set in Vancouver. Canada won 26 medals in Vancouver with a record 14 gold. There will be 36 new medals up for grab in Sochi, giving Canada a decent chance at surpassing that number. The Olympics kick off next Wednesday in Sochi. And that's it for sports. Back to the studio. Thanks, Hugh. After the break, we'll get the latest in entertainment from S.B. Curry. Marijuana and pills, the latest in the Justin Bieber debacle, and Toronto's Winterlicious Festival kicks off. I've got your entertainment update coming up after the break.